Hey guys, I'm out at Fiery Fork again. Uh, this is just an area I really like to make some videos. It's kind of open. Um, I have my own camps and my own uh, my own homestead, but this this works out pretty good. A lot of people come here and camp. Um, today it's really windy, so we've got probably some 20-25 mile an hour gusts. Um, I'm going to do a a uh, a pup tent and. Uh, so that's just another use for the DST tarp. Um, it's very versatile tarp. Uh, first, before we get started and I show you the pup tent, please like and subscribe to this video. Um, I really need some subscribers and uh, hopefully you enjoy this content and I'm gonna keep doing it every week and uh, we'll see what, see what happens. But I hope you subscribe and I hope you like the content. Um, I was just looking the other day at the prices of new bows I was looking at maybe maybe I should buy a new compound bow but when I looked at the price and by the time I got the new bow accessories and everything else it was going to be about three thousand dollars to just replace something like I have now um, and, and what I'm using now is a Matthews EZ7 and I went and I looked at the at the used marketplace went to Archery Talks forums and uh, looked and saw that, you know, I could buy a used bow with accessories for less than half of what I would have to pay for a new, uh, a new Phase 4 or RX-7 or whatever. Um, as you can see, um, I, I use uh, Hoyt or Matthews. Um, now I have, I have a Matthews. Um, prefer Hoyt, but when I bought it, there was nothing available for me. I'm left-handed, so I have some challenges. But uh, anyway, it, it's really expensive, and I'm going to try to to make a video to save you some save you some money. Yeah, there's no reason not to use a top-tier bow, uh, one that would cost you a lot of money if you bought new. And people sell these things after a couple of years. Either they, they don't use them or there are people that really, really love archery and buy new bows every year. Um, and I got to tell you, I don't think the deer really care whether you're using a new bow or an old bow. And they certainly haven't got any tougher over the years. So, you know, I think I'm shooting uh, probably 320 feet per second. Well, that's plenty. That's a whole lot more than the Native Americans used. Uh, when they were killing killing game for for a living so uh, hopefully you'll stick around and come back next week and I'll have that video up for you so I'm gonna go ahead and get get started on this and once again please like and subscribe and we'll talk to you later hey folks uh, today, I uh, just uh, use the DST tarp again, and what we're uh, what we're doing here is basically a pup tent. Uh, it makes it a fairly small shelter, but it's quick to put up. Uses a ridge line, um, and then uh, just some Prusik knots. Get this nice and tight, so in case it rains, no problem. Um, it handles wind well, and it's a uh, it's just a small shelter for uh, for emergencies and just in case there's a big storm, giant storm coming. So let me show you here what we've got. Okay, so ridge line coming from this tree, going down to a taut knot right here. And right here is the first prusik that goes onto the the center, the center of the tarp, or the center relative to the uh, corners and then in the center we have another Prusik knot so we can pull it tight from side to side with the center so we don't get a big we don't want to get a big dip in here that's going to collect rain and then we go all the way over to the other corner and we have the exact same thing this is a Prusik going through the loop down here through the little uh, the pin fob and then I just use a just a little toggle in here now, at the bottom, we peg out our four pegs like we normally would, except we're going to leave the corners out. The corners are going to be your door that you close. 
been the same thing here. I mean, obviously this isn't closed. It could use some adjustment and it's not going to be perfect, but at the same time, we're just using a toggle here. Same thing over here. And then I remove that toggle and I get in. Now, there's not a lot of room in here, as you can see, but there is enough room for me, a haversack, a backpack, or something like that, my sleeping mat, um, sleeping bag, whatever. Um, and what got me to thinking about this is we had, uh, hang on, let me move this a little bit. We had pup tents in the Army. Well, a shelter half that when you got with your buddy, you made you actually had enough to make a full tent um, that two of you could sleep in. Well, you know, you don't always have a buddy when you're out in, uh, in some sort of a survival training or things like that. But there's still no reason not to have a pup tent. And I don't need to carry much with this. All I have is my tarp, um, four pins, and a ridge line. I've always got that stuff with me. So, um, to close it up here, here's the open end, and if you want to let wind in, you can. But we just bring this, do a loop and loop here, and pin that, and then we can do the same thing on the bottom. And you just bring it together like that. You can pin it, leave it open, put some cordage here to hold that, whatever you want. And, uh, like I said, this is really easy to set up. You can see exactly how it sets up. Nothing to it. And I, I think I've seen something like this with some other shelters. I'm not sure what they called it, a forester's tent or something like that. Um, basically, to me, it's a pup tent. So, all right. I hope that was helpful. We'll see you next time.